Welcome to Martin Does Modular episode 3, um, where I am going to show you what this does. Um, basically, as you know, I'm on a quest to make generative music with the Nifty case. And most of the tutorials on YouTube show that you will need a new Music Things Modular Turing Machine Mark II and a quantizer in order to do all of these things uh, and a random noise generator. Um, however, the Nifty case, as you can see, has a number of interesting outputs at the top, which are linked to the MIDI port at the back. Uh, and this allows you to, of course, have something that generates random MIDI notes, which would then be properly quantized and output through these gates. Um, so what I did is I took a uh, Picket 2, which has a daughter board in which I put a 16F688 PIC microchip, which is programmable in C. And I added a daughter board that I soldered together myself, which allows you to add MIDI to it. Um, I think that you can buy these daughter boards as well. They're probably even cheaper if you buy them than when you solder them yourself. So I may consider that in the future. Um, but anyway, this allows you to program things in MIDI and send them to the case. Uh, to demonstrate, I shall turn it on. And as you can see, the light here starts blinking, which indicates that it is receiving a clock signal from this system. You can see also that this one is blinking with the speed of the clock. Uh, this one does 24 pulses per quart. This does one pulse per quart. And you can see that the clock is working if you hook it up to the cells, where you can see that the thing moves with the clock pulse as indicated. Um, now, as you can see, there's two other lights, which are the random notes that are coming out. But of course, you can't hear them at the moment because they're not hooked up in the circuit. However, I can demonstrate by moving the gay, sorry, the CV1 output to the input of the uh, oscillator. And then we can hook up the oscillator to the output. And then you should be able to hear a note that is being played. So that is a, one of the random nodes, and as you can see, it changes because it randomly changes. But now we're not taking advantage of the gate, which we should. So in order to take advantage of the gate, we will hook up the output of the oscillator to the amplifier, the VCA. And from the VCA, the output goes to the output here. That still gives a beep. And now we can hook up the gate to the envelope generator. And now you can see the envelope generator is pinging. And we can then hook up the output of the envelope generator to the amplifier. And now it will play the sounds basically based on what you can hear. The long period, as you can see, if the lattice lit, is it's using the sustain. After it stops, it uh, moves down according to the release, which you can inset. And then you have the attack, which makes it go soft. But I have the attack set to a very low value at the moment. Um, so as you can see, we now have at least some noise. And the next step would be to get the sound of the other sound to the other oscillator, which we can, by just hooking it up here. And I would like to, that to go through the filter, so we have some filter effect. So now we have the two notes randomly playing. So this LED is that of the other note, if it ever changes. Um, well, the filter is a little bit boring at the moment. To make it more interesting, we can hook up the LFO output to the filter input.
and now you can hear the sound play. And these are random notes, but they only change infrequently. It basically loops for two measures, and after two measures, it changes one note slightly. No. In addition, we can still do one more thing to make it more interesting, and that is hook up the... Um, I think the output of the envelope to the other note that is playing. So we're using the filter input of the first of the continuous note that you hear to change based on the envelope of the second note, the higher note. As you can see, we have all sorts of fun effects going on. Now technically you could also hook up the LFO to the chips too, but I'm not really fond of the sound that it makes. It's a little bit of a shrill noise that comes out there. I can demonstrate, but it, it is not really the best of sounds. See? It, it, it is a little bit too 8-bit for me. Um, one thing that this has pointed out is that I'm really at the limits of what is possible here. Ideally, the attack, sustain and release are also controlled somehow by LFOs. Um, of course, it can be made more interesting by... adding a um, multi-stomp 70 CDR uh, setting which will add delightful echoes I think venturing into ambient, this is getting somewhere. Um, of course, there's still one thing that I can do. And that is, of course, use the mod wheel output here. This mod wheel output gives a voltage, I think, like an LFO, but that could be controlled by this circuit as well. Anyway, I, I, I hope you're enjoying. I will probably make a separate recording of this so that you can hear the actual sound, because currently it's of course slightly distorted through the microphone. Thank you.